I'm in Milan Unicorns! So we're not in London anymore, guys. As you can see, we're in Milan. We're super excited to be here because we're interviewing a Brooklyn-based artist called Reginald Sylvester II, who is showing in Europe for the first time. But before we go and see him, let's go and have a look around. This street is so unbelievably me that I've just seen my jacket in the window. My jacket probably stole it from me. It's this one here with all the sequins on it. I recently did a shoot with my friend and she was wearing it, of course. Also, there seems to be loads of other cool jackets inside, leather, customised. See this one over here? This pink chavy one. I like it. I like a bit of pink chavy. Blimey, I've just come past the most amazing vintage shop. It's called, if I pronounce this right, Lo Specchio di Alice. Um, anyway, I've seen some really funky stuff, so I'm gonna go inside and maybe bleed my wallet dry. But hopefully not. Wish me luck. I love this shop because it's got a really nice aesthetic. Like when I walked past, I was like, I need to go in. So they've got all this amazing like jackets and things on the walls. I'm actually going to go and try a jacket on now. Is there a mirror? Oh yeah, it's there. So this is a beautiful leather jacket from the 70s. I love it. It's got all these different kind of colours and I love, you know, working with a lot of colours, as you know. And I quite like it because it's like all block colouring. Um, so I'm going to give it a little try on. The turquoise is definitely my favourite. I don't actually own that much turquoise either, which is nice to find something that you don't have. Oh my God. Since designing my jacket collection, I've become a lot more obsessed with graffiti. On the street here um, is a lot of graffiti, which I really love. This obviously is one of the Hindu gods. Um, I don't exactly know the name because it's not my religion and I don't know that much about it, but I think this is a really beautiful piece of street art. And it's really interesting because I like to take inspiration from these kind of things to potentially put on designs of my jacket. I might, you know, take elements of this, like the colours, or kind of like, I love the evil eyes here. And I really love elephants as well. So I'm definitely thinking for a design in the future to do a beautiful, colorful elephant on the back of my jackets. And just seeing stuff like this is really great for me and really helpful. It's been a really, really great morning and it's a great day. I've seen some beautiful sights and cheekily bought some beautiful things. I've absolutely adored being in Milan so far. I can't help but be inspired by the energy here. There's amazing architecture, the fashion is brilliant, and also I've come across a lot of great art that I've really loved. That brings me on to the next adventure I want to take you guys on. We're going to go and chat to an artist called Reginald Sylvester II, who is exhibiting in Milan for the very, very first time. Um, he's got a really, really amazing collection, so I just want to hear more about it and also talk to him a little bit how he thinks fashion influences art. Let's go. Hello, so I'm here in Milan at the Fondazione Stellini with Reginald Sylvester II, the artist who is absolutely killing it right now, taking Milan by storm. So all of the work in here is the work of this wizard. He's like Harry Potter with a paintbrush, aren't you? I was lucky <laughs> enough to be here for the opening of the show, which is called The Rise and Fall of the People. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the show? The Rise and Fall of the People is um, 
my very first show here in Europe. Pretty much is just a show touching on all these biblical references and uh, things that I feel connect to what's going on in the United States. And then women too are in here, so they're like... The women, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a mama's boy, so... You're a mama's boy, <laughs> yeah. so there's a strong focus on women, would you say, like in um, your work? De uh, definitely, definitely. I always resort back to women uh, just because there's more interesting forms. Just bad, I just like, yeah. Yeah, Whereas exactly. Women are, more like, uh -huh. women are like, ah, okay, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. curve here, curve here. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I feel, yeah. What so kind of is your process in creating a painting? It's really not planned or plotted. For instance, this show is really me trying to find a very happy medium between abstraction and figuration. When thinking about figuration, it's like, okay, of course I'm gonna paint men and women yeah. and figures in general. And so that might be a general like starting point, but as far as like, what the piece is going to entail or the context of it and all of that it kind of just comes either midway or even sometimes days after i finished painting it so reggie this is self-portrait mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about it i ended up making this painting uh just out of really frustration like a material oh. so i was basically funding all my funds into you know everything so i was left with like only browns and whites and yellows oh, okay. so and blues. Kind of like you only had these certain i only had these work. certain paints to work with and then um boom this painting Just comes open. out. When I look at it, I see it as uh, my ultimate self. So are you as ripped under your shirt as you are in that painting? Uh, so I'm not as buff as this guy, no. Not as buff as this is you? This, I, yeah, but it's, he's uh, the perfect me. So tell me, what's the name of this piece? Uh, this piece is titled Diana. There's a painting under this painting that I really hate it. Under here? Under this painting, yeah. There's, there's another, another painting. There's another painting. Do you do that a lot? Not a lot. In this body of work, this is the first time that there's a few paintings that have In here. paintings on the back. There's a few paintings that have paintings underneath. Okay, awesome. As per usual, you wizard. Let's move on to the next one, which Thanks. is this way. So for me, this is like definitely the most kind of eye-catching and breathtaking. Bless, bless. This piece is called... Turmoil in Babylon. Babylon, the root word being babbles. Yeah, Babylon mixed words, up, like, yeah. Mixed up words, and then even in Babylon, it was, you know, it was confusion. And I felt like that's super, super represents the United States. You have so many, just a jumble of cultures and people yeah, and things, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, from good things to bad things, a lot of sexuality and stuff like that too. And so that's why I call it Turmoil, Turmoil in Babylon. Babylon. When I look at these paintings, I can really see them. Obviously, I've got, my brain is like fashion, fashion, fashion. Yeah, yeah. And I can really see them being on, I don't know, with with customization, a lot of the moment, like this uh -huh. jacket is customized. I can see them Very on sick. on a piece of clothing or something. I think yeah. they look really cool. What do you think about kind of fashion and, and art, like together? Yeah, they go hand in hand. Um... I think Turmoil in Babylon is like a very, a very fashionable painting. It Just, really it is fashionable. You know, the black, the red, the henna brown, like you can definitely maybe see this in garments and stuff. Or, yeah, absolutely. You know, like like yeah. on the catwalk, I can completely, like right. it's a, it would be a catwalk piece. Yeah. Big sleeves are kind of in at the moment, and I know it's weird, but it, it kind of reminds me of that because it's quite elaborate and statement, yeah. you know what I mean? The yeah. shapes in this piece of work, so it's, it's really cool. Yeah. Do you have a favorite brand? Um, or a designer. I don't necessarily have a favorite brand, but I love vintage. Yeah, I mean. And I love military wear, as you can see. So you have brands that feed you an aesthetic. And I think a lot of the times, you know, a lot of people just try and dress in that aesthetic, but I think style should play more of a part. 100% I agree. Like I have a favorite, a couple of favorite brands, but I'm not like, oh, I only want to wear that brand. Right. It's very right. much like, I like this brand because of its its kind of energy and its identity. Right. But in general, I shop everywhere and I like, like you said, vintage for me is, yeah. I'm wearing all vintage pretty much Yo, today. And, and so. you, can, you can take a piece from a brand or take a piece from vintage and you can incorporate it into your own style. And so that's what I, I love about fashion. Give me a really good blank tee. Give me really good denim. I give like me a really good guys, boot, though. you know, a hat. And I like to wear things that like, if I do get a drip of paint or it starts to get dirty and stuff that it's not gonna look bad. You yeah, know, like, that would, that's actually quite cool. I like that. Cause yeah. if you kind of spill something on you or something, don't wash it. Yeah, like the like this denim jacket, it's yeah. like timeless. You can either paint something like you have, like an actual design and art, or if you just wore this and you know, you splatter paint, it'd exactly. still be a timeless piece. And that's know? what I mean about fashion and art at the moment, especially yeah. at this time when there's a lot of personalization well, yep. and, and things like that. For me, a lot of the time it's what's meant to be. It's meant to be things happen for a reason. And Definitely. all of this stuff has happened for a reason to bring you to Milan. Yeah. And obviously it's been amazingly successful. Yeah. There's no such thing as coincidence. It's so true. Yeah. Thank you so much, you absolute star. Thank you for chatting to us. Definitely, definitely.
Thank you for coming with YGSF TV to Milan. We've had an awesome time and we hope you've enjoyed being shown around. Now we're going to go and have an Aperol Spritz or 17.